How's it going, guys? We are back for another vlog, and actually, we start that. How's it going, guys? It is Kyle again, as you guys know by now, and we are back for another vlog. And today, we're going to be discussing how we should start a lesson at IQ Bar, whether it's a CGE, a Picaro, a Taster, a adults lesson, whatever it is, how can we start it so it's not the exact same thing over and over and over and over again. So let's get straight into it. Cool guys, so this is the general way that a lesson is started. Hello, my name's Kyle. What's your name? Nice to meet you. How are you? today. Hmm, that's great. And what did you do today? Yeah. Hello, my name's Kyle. What's your name? Nice to meet you. How are you today? Hmm, that's great. And what did you do today? Yeah. Hello, my name's Kyle. What's your name? Nice to meet you. How are you today? Hmm, that's great. And what did you do today? Yeah. Awesome. So as you can see, well, that does get kind of boring and repetitive. Okay. It takes the spark out of your teaching and it takes the spark out of their learning. Okay. The Brady's learning. So whether it's the first class that they're having or the hundredth class that they're having, we need to do something that keeps them engaged throughout the lesson from the beginning, right through to the end. And always remember, if you lose them, at the start of the class, they've lost, or they are lost for the rest of the class. You're not getting them back, right? Unless you're insanely amazing, and then you might bring maybe about 10% of their attention back, but rather don't lose them in the first place. So what are our standard questions, and how do we actually extend or adapt those questions, depending on whether it's the first lesson or the hundredth lesson for that grade? Cool guys, so if it's the very first lesson that you teach, okay, and we know this, why? Because it's either going to be a taster with absolutely no history, or it's going to be a normal session, whether it's CGE, Picro, or Phonics, but if you look in the history, there's only one lesson there, and it's your taster lesson. Now, if you are the one that did the taster, and you got the first normal session, well, don't ask the exact same questions. What do I mean by that? Don't ask, what is your name? How? old are you? Why? Because you should remember, and it's all there in the history, okay? Now, if you weren't the person that taught the taster, and it's the first session, right? First normal session, or if you've got a taster that, like I said previously, it's the first lesson, there's no history there, right? Your three or your four basic questions should be, how are you today? What's your name? Can you tell me what you did today? And then, how old are you? Okay. Now the, what did you do today? That's kind of touch and go, depending on how sort of amazing they are at English at this point in time, I sort of throw it in there just in case, but if they can't answer it, well, I move on. Okay. And then I'll go straight into the icebreak of the game or the song, depending on which one I'm doing. And I'll go through that in a second. Okay. So if it's the first time, go for those questions. It is perfect. However, if it's your second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth time that you've either had this Brady or he's had one, two, three, five, a hundred different classes. Well, hearing those exact same questions does get kind of boring, right? And it just becomes this one big, massive, repetitive obstacle that they have to get through every single day. So change it up again. I'll always ask if it's the first time I've had that Brady, I'll always ask, well, what is your name? My name's Kyle because it's polite, okay? I don't often ask them how old they are because in my opinion, that gets asked too much, okay? And you can always see how old they are, right? By looking at the information. So what do I do from there? The next question is, well, how are you today? Because, well, that always changes. They can have a good day, a bad day, a happy day. And if I know for a fact that in the previous two lessons, well, he said, well, happy, 
or sad or angry or he's just used one some one word answer that's kind of like a feeling right i'll sort of adapt on that and change it to well hmm well we can say i'm fine write it on the board and then go well fine equals happy i'm happy so instead of saying fine sorry instead of saying happy we can end up saying fine and then make a sentence with that word or if he says well oh i'm excited today yeah and gets all like sort of amped up and everything well then i'll sort of change excited or whatever the word is that he's using and i'll maybe change it to great or i'm doing spectacular and teach him a brand new word now he's learning a new word plus he's learning a sentence and the little intro is slightly different Okay? So that's what you can always do. Extend on the how are you. Then the next thing is, especially at a higher level, Brady. So I wouldn't technically give an age to this because while well, age doesn't necessarily tell you how amazing he is at English or she is in English or what level they actually are. So if they are at a high level and you'll be able to see this by watching the previous video, well, I always ask them, well, hmm, why are you happy today? Why are you fine? And now they start thinking. Not a lot of people ask why they're feeling that way, right? So if you pop that in, well, they kind of get shocked out of their system. Well, now they're out of their comfort zone. Now they're going to start thinking and now everything's changed again, right? They're engaged and that's the main thing. And then what I'll end up doing is if they don't get it, I'll write on the whiteboard, I'm fine with different arrows. And then I'll say, well, because I maybe one arrow will be, hmm, because I played football today, because I didn't have any homework today, because I played with my friends today, because I'm on vacation. And then I'll say, well, I'm happy today because I had a juicy cheeseburger for breakfast and I played with my friends today. Yeah. And then they'll pick up on it and go, well, what did I do today? Well, I played football. Well, that made me happy. I'm happy because I played football. Okay. So a why question every now and then. Don't do it every single lesson, right? But every now and then, every two or three lessons, well, it helps a lot to sort of change the whole role of that conversation and then what i'll normally do is well what did you do today and whatever they say i'll extend on it i played football today well who did you play football with your mom your dad your friends your coach hmm was it a match or was it practice now a lot of people don't or a lot of bradys i should say don't necessarily know what a match or practice is so now there's an opportunity to teach them a brand new word also so pop it in there pop it on the whiteboard and explain it to them what practice is, what a match is, and what they did. Nine out of ten times they're practicing or just messing around with a bunch of friends. But every now and then, I think I had a Brady the other day that I asked this question and he didn't know what it was. I told him about the match and everything. And then it sort of like sparked this whole sort of like amazement, right? And then he just went, well, I played a match and I won this and I did this and I got a trophy here. Yeah. And he just kind of went on and on and on and on and on about how he played a match and he won and he did amazing. He scored a couple of goals and he got a trophy for it and all that. And then it just sparked a full on conversation just by asking, well, hmm, did you do or did you play a match or was it practice? Okay. So extend on it as much as you possibly can. Well, I read a book today. Well, what book? Did you read? Do you remember the title? And if they don't know the title, well, now you explain the word title, okay? So use every opportunity to pop in new vocab every single, well, moment that you get, right? So extend on all of those questions, change it up completely. If you do have any new questions, right? Or if you can think of anything else that I haven't mentioned right now, pop that in as well, but you want to make it as different as you possibly can. And don't do the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. So let's move on to something else. Cool guys. So I did mention this earlier. Ooh, did I mention it earlier? I think I did. Different icebreakers. Now the go-to icebreaker is always the song. Why? Because it's super easy and it's in the classroom. However, some of the older Brady's, and I always ask them at the beginning of the lesson or whenever I'm about to play the song, I always go, well, do you want or would you like to listen to a song? Yeah. Ba -da -ba 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 -da -ba. Da -da 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 -da. And then I'll get an answer from them. Or if they look at me blankly and get like, well, who the earth is he doing? I'll go, well, yes or no. Song. La 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 la. Or no. And then I'll either get an answer. If they say no, we'll respect it and don't play a song, go to something else, which we'll, be, we'll deal with in a second. But if they do say yes, well, always get them to say it in a full sentence. Now, this comes to the whole, well, 
getting them to talk and getting them to create full sentences? Well, yes. Hmm. Yes, you want to eat a chicken. Yes, you like running. Or yes, you would like to listen to a song and then get them to repeat it. So then what I'll do is once they've actually answered me, I'll go, well, let's try that one more time. Would you like to listen to a song? Yes. Yes, I would. Perfect. Let's see what song we have today. And then I'll end up playing a song. Bam. And then we'll sing along, or I'll sing at least. They might sing. I've got one Brady that sings all the time. But here's the deal, right? If it's a more experienced Brady, if they know what's cooking, right? At the end of the song, ask them a couple of questions based on the song. Now, what that means is, for example, I'd mentioned this earlier with my previous Brady, uh, not previous Brady, previous Brady, I had which was, it was a purple dinosaur creature looking thing with two funky teeth right and it was all about what he likes to do so after the song what i ended up doing is well i asked well this monster ram likes to run i like or love depending on which one you want to do to swim hmm what do you like to do hmm and then they obviously say, well, I like doing this. Perfect. Well, now you've got a little conversation going and they're actually learning from the song. They're paying attention as opposed to just kind of, oh, it's the same song again. Oh. So they're actually getting involved and they're staying engaged from the beginning, right? Then the other thing what I added on as well was, well, now that you're saying like, well, what do you, what don't you like to do? And he doesn't, or what didn't he like doing? I think it was reading or running. I can't remember. Ah, it was running. That's what it was. And then I ended up playing a little game with him, a little activity, right? This is coming into your activities, which we're going to deal with in a second, but I'm going to say it now anyway, okay? And that's the I like, but I don't like. And we each get a chance to go, I like to swim, but I don't like to run. And your turn. And then it goes to your turn. Well, I like jumping, but I don't like eating burgers. And then he goes, and then you go, and he goes, and he goes, and you goes, and he goes, and you goes, and you go. Ooh, there we go. And you guys get the drift, right? Until someone kind of goes, well, hmm, I don't really know. And you'll be surprised. It happens pretty quick, usually to me. Kind of run out of things like this. What don't I like doing? I like doing a lot of things. Right, anyway, moving on swiftly, right? So use the actual song as an icebreaker, but for older Bradys, use the song and questions based on the song. If it's a younger Brady, we'll just make it super fun and exciting, right? Bam, start dancing, sing along. Sometimes if you sing enough, well, they end up singing with you, and then you guys can have like a little singing competition, right? A nice little sing-off. However, if they don't want to listen to the song, okay, we have to do something else, and that ends up coming into our games and activities, which is right over there. Cool guys, so I know we had a whole entire seminar based on this. However, I'm not going to go through all the details. Why? Because Tamsin made an insanely awesome seminar that you can look at anytime you want to on the IQ Bar Teams seminars and announcement group, right? So if you haven't seen it yet, go look at it. It is it is amazing, right? So I'm going to go through a couple of things that I use and a couple of things that I've taken from that seminar. Now, the very first one that pops into my mind is noughts and crosses. But how do we make that educational? I'm glad you asked, right? So this is what we're going to do. We're going to look at the previous lesson. Bam. It was on past tense and action words. So I jumped, ran, walked, swam, hiked, and anything else that you can possibly think of, right? Um, what we're going to do is we're going to take those words and put them in the crossword. The noughts and crosses, not the crossword. If you're putting in the crossword, we've got a problem because that's not what we're explaining right now. We're going to put them in the noughts and crosses game. Now, what do I mean by that? Okay, we're going to draw on the whiteboard our noughts and crosses block. And then in every block, we're going to put a action word or a verb. Now, we can do this one of two ways. We can either say the past tense word played ran walked and then what happens is for them to actually play in that spot for them to put a naught or a cross you actually have to say the word in that block and if they don't know it or if they can't pronounce it well they can't play there okay 
or you can make it a little bit more difficult. You can put the present tense word, bab, run, walk, hike, jump, and then for them to actually play in a position, they have to say the past tense of that word that they want to play. And they can start popping it in. Bam, 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 bam. And now they're actually learning while they're playing a fun activity. And kids love noughts and crosses for some reason, right? Then the other thing that I end up doing is, again, look in the previous lesson for, and it could be anything, um, actions, animals, uh, verbs, uh, food, whatever you like, and then turn that into a game. Another awesome one is mining. Okay. I love my neck. Run. Right. Yeah, that was terrible, but it's okay. Okay, so what they can do is, well, make sentences through miming. Now, what a lot of people do is they do the one word miming. Well, what am I doing? Oh. Ooh, knocked over the light. Ooh, let's put that back up. Ooh. Okay, so, and what they end up doing is, well, they go, well, swim, run, jump, hike. Okay, and they're kind of getting the words and they're learning the vocab, but how is that actually helping them, right? A better way of doing that is, well, I like swimming. And I like to swim or swimming. And then they can go, well, Hmm. I don't like skipping. Okay, so you can mime out actual sentences. That's another one that I like. Now, the other one that I really like as well is the hangman. However, we changed the name to the whole flower thing, or we changed the game to the whole flower petal thing just because it seems so much better, right? So basically what happens is, and I'm stealing this from the seminar, is you get a flower, bam, and you get X amount of petals around. You can get whatever number you want, 10, 15, 20, 200, whatever you like. And then take a word or take a few words from the previous lesson, especially if it's section or part B of A, because they generally fit together nicely. Okay? And then take words from there and see if they remember it and they have to guess the letters or guess letter by letter to make the word. And then if they get it right, well, perfect. You put the letter in the space. If you get it wrong, well, you block out or color in one of the flower petals. Or what you could do is make it fall. So erase it and then have it fall to the ground. And then you can say, well, if all the petals fall off the flowers, well, you lose and I win. And then swap over. Okay, So there's loads of different ideas for icebreakers or ice breaking games yeah it's a word okay you just have to sort of think outside the box and make sure that it has some sort of value to it and it's not just fun and games for the grade now for younger ones well every now and then you might need that break for just well fun and games right make the educational variation of the game really fun for them and what perfect guys so the last thing that i just want to mention is the homework, okay? And again, this was mentioned, ooh, was it today or yesterday? It was mentioned sometime in the announcements and seminars chat. If you do have homework or if you have given homework, make sure that you check in the class for that homework. It'll generally be a green picture with a whole bunch of random numbers and letters, okay? It's their updated or uploaded homework. Make sure you check that. What I tend to do is I go to the homework slide first and I'll go, well, this was your homework. Hmm. Did you remember to do your homework? Hmm. Click, click. Ah, here it is. Wow. That's some great homework. And then we can carry on going through that, right? Or I'll go, well, hmm. Can I see your homework? Ah, I've got it right over here. Wow. And then it's right over there and they get all excited and everything. It's all amazing. It's all exciting. <laughs> and then we are obviously marked. But just make sure that you've looked at that homework before you actually get into the class. Why? One, you know that it's there. Two, you know, well, what it actually has to happen for that homework. Now, generally what I find is they have the answers on that sheet. So if they have like a que question where they're going to unjumble the word or unjumble the actual sentence, well, I won't have the homework there because while the homework's done and they're just reading off the answers run jump swim i'll look at the homework slide and then i'll get them to unjumble it first and then i'll go back to the homework slide their one that they did and then i'll mark it off to see if they spelt it right and everything's correct same with the sentences if it's questions 
I will read the question and then go to the homework and then get them to read the answer and then check the vocab, grammar, and all that jazz in there. So always check the homework slide or the home if the homework is put up in the lesson before you actually get into the lesson, right? Perfect. And then the very last thing, just with regards to tasters and everything, okay? Like I said, you're generally always going to have a different taster or a different person in the taster. Sometimes you get two of the same person or two tasters with the same person. Why? Because they just want to have or double check that they enjoy the lesson. But always think of a different way to introduce yourself. This is pretty much the selling point of IQ bar. The more tasters we get, the bigger the company goes, the bigger the company is, the, well, the longer the company lasts. And the, um, the more amazing the company gets. So always think of a brand new, engaging way to introduce yourself right um just off the top of my head well you could always have the lesson start and no one's there yeah especially if you know that it's like a kid and then you go wow hello tiger couldn't think of another word and then my name's john how are you today and then you can carry on going that way so just think of brand new ways to actually engage with the bradys and make it fun and exciting every single lesson and with that peace out guys i will catch you on the flip side cheers guys